the, the Evergrande restructuring is 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 completely priced in by the markets, right? And but what we've seen is is you know a lot of contagion spreading to other developers. Yeah, Chinese single B spreads continue to be sort of hovering around a level of around 17% above treasuries, um, which which prices in another 30% default rate. You know, kind of looking out for about the next 12 months. Um, and, and, and that really is quite excessive. It's very rare to see a sector price in this much downside. Um, and so the reason we're optimistic, obviously, is, is, is not that we have some sort of grand vision and, and we can see past all of the uncertainty that's in the market today. We, we, you know, we recognize that there is a lot of uncertainty today and, and, and stock picking is, is very important in terms of where you place your exposure. Um, but in terms of valuation, what's reflected in the price, how much negativity and pessimism is in the price? I mean, it, it, it's you know quite historic in terms of what we're seeing. Uh, and so we think that is the opportunity, uh, especially in a world where, where so much else is, is priced quite close to perfection. Um, you know, seeing a market like this, which is a large market available to global investors, seeing it priced to such levels of distress, that is the opportunity at the moment. And for those with a, a fairly strong stomach, one might have to say, and bringing that property sector sort of debate back around to the Chinese economy, what has this done, Evergrande, and what's happening in the property sector with regards to people's Chinese investors' confidence in property, and then what we're seeing play out in terms of personal wealth and consumption in China? Yeah, so, so, so the Chinese property sector is, is really one of the most important sectors to the Chinese domestic economy. You know, if you look at its, its exposure, it, it accounts for upwards of 30% of Chinese GDP, but, it, but that reach goes much deeper than that. You know, 90% of Chinese households own property, which accounts for 70% of their, of their household wealth. Um, and, and you know, sort of provincial level and city level governments generally rely on, on you know, on land sales for, for roughly 30 percent or so of their own revenues. Right. And, and these land sales are done to developers. So so maintaining a degree of stability, um, you know, which, which is really kind of one of the core arguments of, of the current government in terms of what it brings to the table for China. You know, maintaining that stability, that social stability and that economic stability, we think, is an imperative. Um, yes, there's a lot of volatility. Um, but we do expect to see some degree of, of, of sort of policy correction to come and, and, and stabilize things from here.